Virginia to California, all the way back. Let's go. Let me show you everything we did in this rig to make it less fuel efficient. All right, so it's kind of a joke, but uh, the Ford Bronco Raptor, they're not fuel efficient. They do have a small gas tank, but man, they're fun to drive. So some of the things we've done to this on this road trip that's gonna kill our fuel economy, but make it better overall, overhead lights. A lot of wind noise is what it is. I knew that, front lights. We also picked up the front rakes. We have some uh, racing springs on this bad boy right here. Pick up the front, let it handle jumps, whoops, a whole hell of a lot better. Uh, down here in the back, same thing, racing springs. We also swapped out the BFGs for the Wild Peak AT4s, whole lot better. And then there was the weight. So again, we're going cross country and back. I'll give a full detour tour on this thing later, but this thing is loaded down to the brim. Um, and I do mean loaded down to the brim. So when you take on bigger tires, big roof lights, whole bunch of weight, picked up the front end, all that translates to is it looks real good and real clean, but it will kill your fuel economy. <laughs> this is just phase one actually guys. So we, we have a bunch of other parts ordered that haven't come in yet. We have a kick-ass rooftop uh, rack. We have an amazing uh, 4x4 Colorado rooftop tent coming, super slick. We have a nice rack in the back coming, super slick. This is just phase one. So what have we done to this right now over stock? And again, this is basically a brand new Ford Raptor. It has less than a thousand miles on it. We did a full night camo wrap with full PPF over the wrap. Clearly, front runners, overhead runners, uh, windshield tinted, all the windows tinted. And there's a lot of antennas on this. So this little bad boy right here, this little CB radio antenna, CB inside, I'll show you in a second. And back here, we have this massive antenna right here. It's our cell phone booster, basically giving us our own cell phone tower. Another little backup camera that links to the uh, front wolf cam. All right, let me show you inside. Again, one of the other awesome little creature comforts, the running boards that come on this kind of suck. We put the rock sliders on here, but they're the rock sliders with the kickout step. So real, real clean, set up real, real high. All right, guys, getting into this rig. Let's take a look, see what we did to make this thing cross country ready all right so long and short of it real easy cb radio down here uh magnet mount everything is good there we do have a tablet running with the screen a couple of the bullet point mounts for phones we have a wolf box rear view camera and dash cam doing something weird right now but i'll figure it out uh we do rock the 360c if you know what that is you know what that is and yeah so everybody already knows the Bronco is not very big inside. It's not the point of a Bronco. It's not a Tahoe. It's not an excursion. It's not an expedition. It's a Bronco. So same size as a Jeep. You ain't got no room. It is what it is. You gotta learn how to pack and you gotta have everything in here. But as far as the driving position and seat comfort, it's better than a Jeep. No question about it. I'm a tall guy. I'm 6'4". I can sit with my head vertically up in this. I can't do it in a Wrangler. I've had many of them. I've had many Wranglers. I can't sit straight. My head hits the crossbar. Everybody over six feet knows exactly what I'm talking about with a Wrangler. And, and, and think about this, man. A Jeep Wrangler, American icon, but a normal size American can't even sit in the thing comfortably. That's a fact. Bronco, they fix that. Jeep, I challenge you, fix it. And it's not just a Bronco to figure this out. This is a four by four square. I'm not taking it cross country, but <laughs> a lot of reasons on that. But with this four by four square, I have a ton of headroom. So I can sit in here and be hyper comfortable and rock and roll with it, go anywhere with it. Get into a Jeep Wrangler, it ain't the case. Jeep, fix that trash. All right, guys, real talk, your money. Going across country, would you take a 2023 4x4 square, full out? Would you take a Model X Plaid sitting on an Overland package? Hee <laughs> Or would you take this beast right here? You already know what we're taking. We're taking this beast right here. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. Uh, believe it or not, with the way this sits right now, this will probably get, I'm guessing, 14, 15 miles a gallon if I'm lucky. The 4x4 square, uh, you know, 13, 14 miles a gallon as well. So the only thing that sucks is twin turbo V8, small twin turbo V6. That sounds a million times better. This doesn't sound bad, but it ain't nowhere near the same. We are officially westbound and down. Had to go top off with fuel. So I didn't start it right away. We're about 30 miles exactly into the trip averaging an impressive 12.2 miles per gallon. 
why are we going so horrible? Because it is windy, guys. There's like 30 to 40 mile an hour wind, headwind right now at that. Very, very windy, very challenging. Um, and on top of that, guys, we have 38 inch tires, legitimately. 38s, uh, front lift and racing springs, and a whole bunch of weight. But that's okay. We're comfortable, we're rocking. And that's it. We're just gonna be southbound and down. Try not to kill each other. Try to have a great time. Try to see some new sights. Make it to Camp Pendleton in one piece. Got anything to add to that? Nope, I'm ready. We shall see. About 325 miles in, not making a bad time at all. We've been cruising 75-ish. I don't like to go too fast. We've got 38 inch tires, so it is what it is. Anyway, pulling down into Bristol, we're gonna hit some mellow pizza. Hardest thing possible when you travel, guys, as you know, is the food you consume. Avoid gas station. I was told something by a good friend. Her name is also Aaron. And she said, never, ever buy food where you buy gas. And honestly speaking, it's been some of the best advice I ever had. So a little bit out of the way on this stop right here, coming the back way into Bristol, Virginia. Bristol Motor Speedway is not too far from us at all. Get a little bit of good, healthy pizza. I know that sounds uh, like it's not too in the same, but it actually is. You can get really good, really healthy pizza. So onward upward westward in the wind and beautiful bristol virginia where are we going to see mellow mushrooms you ready to eat ready let's roll let's go just like that crossing state lines for the first time on this trip from virginia to welcome to tennessee boys and girls first state crossing of many Part of making a road trip fun, you gotta learn to dance in the car. You gotta learn to just put the miles in, have fun, do a little smiling, do a little dancing, and just learn to enjoy the drive. Getting off 81 South onto I-40 West. What's beautiful about I-40? Well, you can literally get on I-40 and go coast to coast, literally coast to coast. Um, not always the best road to travel. There's some, all right, had about enough of that damn Dang, but anyway, catching up on some Netflix. Doing good. Doing okay? Doing great. What are you doing? Stuff. First major city crossing. First metro area. Old Knoxville, Tennessee. Heading to Nashville. Well, actually, we're heading to Cookville for a night, but uh, basically halfway between old Knoxville and Nashville. Rest in Cookville. Cool little place. Wake up in the morning. Keep on heading westbound and down. Day two, up early, it's 829, a little bit of a late start. However, that's pack up, get coffee, stop, go to Cracker Barrel, because it's a little bit hungry, leave Cracker Barrel, get it to go, black tea. It's still only 830, and we're on the road, so yeah. Making moves. Making moves. The, uh, Yesterday was a little bit tough driving. There was a tremendous amount of wind, 30, 40 mile an hour gust, a lot of headwind. Um, tiring day to drive, say the least. Anyway, we're leaving Cooksville, Tennessee, basically right outside of Nashville, heading westbound and down. Here we go. And the goal today, I don't know, if we can bang out 700 miles today without pushing it too hard, with getting some good stretching in, getting some good movement in, getting at least two good meals, that'd be a win. So we'll see. Welcome to Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee, on the outskirts, rolling in heavy, 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 heavy traffic this morning, to be expected, I assume. Uh, there's always heavy traffic coming in and out of Nashville. Not that we're stopping, because stopping in Nashville is a pain, but still Nashville nonetheless. Great American city, Americana, Rust, well, this ain't a Rust Belt, but it's built. Well, I guess you could say it's a Rust Belt. It's got metal buildings, they all rust, but it's all the same. Anyway, not the prettiest part of the drive, but it is cool. Coming to you from beautiful Jackson, Tennessee, just a little bit east of uh, Memphis. Coming in, doing a little snack and drop. See what you got. Little PB and J. PB and J, can't go wrong, man. Just get good bread, good peanut butter, and a little bit of good jam. Eat it all day long. But keep everything in the fridge. Uh, fridge runs off the car if the car is driving. Second the car stops, the fridge switches over to that uh, battery right there. We have a cutting board that attaches right there. Probably pretty windy out here. Another cutting board right there. It's gonna be hella windy guys, so I'm trying to stop it, but wind in this part of the country, as you know, is a lot. So, 
This is the process right here. PB and J. And welcome to the mighty Mississippi River, crossing from Tennessee, Memphis, across the bridge into Arkansas, coming up on Little Rock. Ain't really much to see in Memphis, ain't really much to see in Little Rock, but still beautiful. And here we go. Welcome to Arkansas. Crossing the mighty Mississippi. Pretty cool. Welcome to, what's this, East Palestine? I think, I think Palestine, Arkansas. Uh, we're going to the Wild Donkey Mexican restaurant. So this will be interesting, to say the least. Slide but, left onto North Main Street, then turn left onto Eastwood Avenue. One thing to always remember, guys, is that in Little Town America, this town had a sign that said uh, population 600. But this is real America, and this is what most people forget. Look at this, hometown medical clinic right here to our right, right? This is real America, and you have to remember that, Take man. the next left onto Eastwood Avenue, then your destination, destination will be on the left. Legitimately get out and travel and really see a lot of this stuff. Check out this amazing street taco place we found in the middle of Arkansas. Absolutely ridiculous. Good to go? It is. Mm -mm -mm. Little town, guys, in the middle of Arkansas. This is literally dead center of the town. Man, how beautiful is this? Veterans Memorial Park, a town of only 692 people, man. And look how beautiful this is. Of course, you got the Marine Corps dead center on that. I like to see that. Look at that. Eee! Marine Corps EGA right there, folks. Dead center where it should be at all times. Leading the way, first in, last out. Let's go. Thank you, Arkansas, for just a little bit of motivation. Midwest dust storms going through Arkansas. Man. Hi, guys. First big storm that came out of nowhere on us. Um, speed limit on this road is 75. We have dropped down to low 50s, uh, rolling with our flashers on, just taking it easy. Wind is about 30, 40 miles an hour. We're right on the Oklahoma, Arkansas border, and uh, this is tough driving. The uh, wind has been a problem all day. Uh, very difficult hanging onto the steering wheel, just kind of cruising. Stand by. One thing you always want to think about in these conditions are a couple factors. Your level of fuel. Kind of have a rule. Try not to drop below half a tank. A bad fatality accident that would shut this interstate down could happen in a moment's notice in a storm like this. Heavy wind, heavy rain. Make sure you always have half a tank of gas. On top of that, always have reserve fuel. If you do get stuck and stranded, always have food, water, and ability. Always have a CB radio. The amount of accidents that occur simply due to speed it's just insane. So, bad weather, heavy wind, crazy rain, just slow down a little bit. Give yourself time, be just fine. Anyway, still westbound, approaching uh, Oklahoma border here in just a little bit. Rocking and rolling. Welcome to Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, we are way off the beaten path here, but we had a uh, good time. Home with a point out of college over there. You know, college or high school? I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Fort Smith, nice stadium. It says, uh, what's it the hell to say? Citizens Stadium, home of the Pointers. I'm assuming a Division III school, kind of big if it was a high school, but I don't Take know. Take the next ride onto Rudy anyway, Road. Anyway, so Fort Smith, Arkansas. Whoa, that's going to be really bumpy. Stand by. They need to get a little maintenance on this damn place. Get a little more state money down here in Arkansas and Oklahoma. So we are literally on the Arkansas-Oklahoma border. Which is kind of cool. Continue for one and a half miles. And uh, we're trying to find some lodging. Definitely not staying over there to the left. That's definitely not happening. It looks a little not so good. Most important part to traveling, still got to get it in. Long day of driving, eating in a little hotel, find a gym, get in, put in the work. Good morning, Fort Smith, Arkansas. We will be crossing the border into Oklahoma here just pronto. And let me tell you what. It's cold. It's like 34 degrees and hella windy. So we're coming west thinking it's going to be all warmer. We're going south thinking it's going to be all warmer. And we just woke up to like 30 mile an hour winds and 34 degree temperatures. So a little chilly skilly out here on the border of Arkansas and Oklahoma. We'll grab some coffee, put this bitch back on the highway, start rolling. Hello, Mr. Casey's. Casey's in the south and the west is kind of like a sheets a little bit, pretty pretty close to a sheets. 
Um, for us, East Coast, it's pretty cool. All right. The one thing we can't pass in this here Bronco Raptor and all the work that's been done to it, you know what it is? You know what we can't pass? A gas station. So we just topped off. We didn't really need to. We had three quarters of a tank. But let's talk about some travel and safety. A couple things. Carry guns with you. A lot of guns. Have at least one mini long gun and two pistols. One pistol per adult. That way when you're getting out of the car in sketchy areas, sketchy bathrooms, sketchy gas stations or whatever, you have a lot of options. Really, really important. Second thing, always have backup fuel on the vehicle, in the vehicle. Third thing, always have backup food. Fourth thing, do some site recons. Go on Google Earth, know where you're stopping, know how to get in, know how to get out. In the case of an emergency, in the case of a boxing, in the case of a robbery, know you can slide behind the vehicle, jump the curb, take the side road, whatever it is, but having that plan ahead of time, which literally only takes a couple seconds to formulate, can get you off the X pretty quick. So anyway, so that's it. Uh, out here in the Midwest, this is going to be a hard day of driving. I got a feeling it's cold, it's windy, and it's only 6 o'clock in the morning. So, um, yeah, we'll see. But as you start to get separated, and now that we're crossing into Oklahoma, we're going to start going to some very desolate, remote areas with not a lot in between stop to stop. Really, really important that uh, vehicles in good working order. And where am I going? To the right? Okay. Vehicles in good working order. Gas tank is filled up all the time. If you can stop at all points, stop and top off. Doesn't matter if you got three quarters of a tank, half a tank. Keep as much fuel in the car at all times as possible. So that's it. Pulling up to old Starbucks. I know I hate supporting the brand, but not too many options, if I'm being honest with you. And um, need to get some bottled water as well. So that's it. Little Star Huck. Top off a of caffeine and be on the way. Welcome to Oklahoma. There we go. And Welcome how's Oklahoma? Oklahoma? Yeah, thank you, Google. How's Oklahoma entering Cherokee Nation? How's the Oklahoma greatness this morning? Man, high wind, a crazy wind, real cold, 35 degrees now, so warming up slightly. It was 34 a little bit ago. That's okay. We're literally going all the way across the state today. So we're going from corner to corner on this beautiful state of Oklahoma. Cherokee Nation, let's go. Fun fact, Chickasaw, Oklahoma is home West to Jefferson Carrie Underwood. Avenue, Did not know that. Welcome to Chickasaw, Oklahoma, where we are stopping for some quick breakfast. It's about uh, 8.30 in the morning. We've already been driving for about an hour and a half. Pretty hungry. And uh, we found on the map this little town right off of I-40. Topped off on gas. I don't even want to tell you about our fuel economy. It's not important. This rig's not for fuel economy, so it really don't matter. But uh, we love doing this, and I love doing this. So these small little towns, this is what it's all about. People forget Main these towns Street. exist until you get out there and drive, man. This Jeffrey country Avenue. has so much more than just big cities, and people really, really, really forget that. Um, and when you get out and really explore, you really see, like, gosh, I don't even know how to explain or put words what I'm trying to say, but small town USA is real USA. Small town USA is every single town outside of big cities. That's a fact. Anyway, hopefully if y'all have ever been here to Chickasaw, Oklahoma, we'll turn on the Gentry Avenue. A lot of things here named Gentry. I don't know if Gentry's an old family, old blood, but there's Gentry streets, there's Gentry buildings, a lot of Gentry. So my buddy name was Gentry. My buddy, uh... Shot four times working an overtime assignment at Walmart. Go figure that. Anyway, those days are long gone. So, Continue on West Gentry Avenue let's find our Sally's uh, breakfast shop. Found our destination. Sally's Cafe, only place serving breakfast right next to a hair. Man, I could use a damn haircut too. All right, this looks kind of busy, but I bet they got some good food. So let's see y'all. Busy is always good, and busy is a blessing. Never forget that. Everybody complains about being busy. You know what's worse than being busy? Not being busy. That's a fact. The only thing worse than being busy is not being busy. Never forget it. Always be thankful. Always show gratitude. Always be appreciative. Things I need to work on myself for sure. That's okay. We'll pull on up into here. We got a cowboy coming up in front of us right now. I see him. He's got his old cowboy hat on. Get this thing parked over. Boom. Got a cowboy. Cowboys! We made it to Oklahoma City. 
Oklahoma City Boulevard do right. And um, it's kind of cool, man. Because, oh, hold on, we're getting radar. K band ahead. You know, we're rocking a 360C radar detector, picking up every little thing moving. But uh, Oklahoma's interesting, man. There's basically nothing and then a small town, and then absolutely nothing and a small town, and then nothing in uh, Oklahoma City pops out of nowhere. So it's pretty cool. Next stop, Amarillo, Texas. And uh, I think about 150, maybe 200 miles, but. Amarillo, Texas, our next big old stop. So we're still westbound and down I-40, rolling through Oklahoma. Welcome to the great state of Texas. Crossing the northern Oklahoma border. Crossing over into beautiful Texas. Shockingly, everything looks exactly the same right now, but that's okay. I-40, northern Texas. Here we come, next stop, Cadillac Ranch. <laughs> Here we are at a uh, north of Texas, beautiful rest stop. Awesome little old school windmill. Gonna go back outside. Don't get it confused, it's Texas, but it is cold. <laughs> very cold at that. And very windy. But check this awesome rest stop out. I know anybody on I-40 probably knows this rest stop, man. Um, absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning. I mean, my gosh, why is it every rest stop in America like this? I don't even know, but it is awesome out here. So go enjoy some of this beautiful countryside real quick. Look at that, awesome carved into the damn ground there. It's the state of Texas. Pretty cool. See what you think. What you think? I love it. Beautiful out here. Windy. It's a little chilly. But look at this view. Pretty crazy. It's, crazy. It's, uh, it's, it's quite cold though. So that's the crazy part, man. We're in Texas right now. You'd be thinking hot Texas, whatever. It ain't. It's like 40 degrees and hella windy. It's an awesome view up here on top of this rest area, man. Really pretty. Absolutely pretty. Literally look 360. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Real cool. Just did a little hike up on this rest stop to get to that overview, but look how cool this rest area is, man. I actually encourage you to get out, walk around a little bit, take the dogs for a walk. Got some trails, got some picnic areas. Pretty damn cool. Good job there, North Texas. Looking good. Cadillac Ranch, museum and gift shop. Really cool. Route 66, let's go. Love it. With the Route 66 uh, museum slash gift shop slash uh, Albuquerque. Oh, we're in Albuquerque. Where the hell are we? Amarillo. Amarillo. Uh, Albuquerque. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, it's kind of cool though, guys. So this is a little museum, and now we're going to jump in the car. We're going to go to the actual Cadillac Ranch just down the street and uh, go from there. All right, guys, we have an interesting predicament. We are at the Cadillac Ranch. Can you put that window up for one or something? You can see all the Cadillacs right there. But there's a problem, and it's called heavy wind. Let me show you. So this is the problem. Uh, if you went to the Cadillac Ranch, and you're on the left side, or if you're waiting to go on the right side, you're stuck. Uh, emergency crews aren't letting anybody go by, and it's actually cold outside and really windy, but these wires are all falling to include... Like, look next to us. So we ain't getting out. That's why I talked about doing pre-site surveillance, pre-site survey. Don't just jump. Don't just run. Take a second. Figure out what you're doing, folks. I know damn well those wires were down before those people went across. And now they're stuck. Yeah, that's not good. So we're going to stay warm. And uh, we're just going to take a little video. Old Cadillacs here. Let's go zoom in. Give it old Samsung look. There's all the old beautiful Cadillacs. Really not too much to see if I'm being honest. But I would have went out there. Got some cool photos, did some cool things. Really not that many people here, it would have been awesome. Unfortunately, for everybody here though, they're stuck and uh, they ain't being allowed to go nowhere. So, we ain't doing all that. We're just gonna bang a U-turn, we're gonna get on up out of here. What can we do? Are you muted? No. There you go. There's, she can talk, guys, believe it or not. She can actually say something. She can say something. She can talk. She can actually That's say all that. kinds of weird stuff. You yeah, just got to ask her to talk. Just like that on I-40, we are leaving Texas and entering New Mexico on I-40 or Old Historic Route 66. To our left is Welcome a hellacious... Malicious storm to the left, so we're trying to kind of drive through that. We'll see what happens. 
but uh, interesting. Welcome to another Route 66 Museum, just over the border into New Mexico from amazing Texas. Absolutely awesome, guys. Look at this beautiful Corvette. Look at these cars, man. I'm trying to be quiet because it's quiet here. People are just enjoying the vehicles, and I don't want to be all loud, but this is really, really, really cool. So this is I-40, Route 66, New Mexico, basically Welcome Center. So we literally had this museum almost to ourselves, and... Uh, Oh my gosh, look at the ceiling. <laughs> Hulk. This old Mustang. Man, Bel Airs. A couple Pontiacs over there, it was really cool. Looks like a Fairlane, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's old Ford Fairlane. This is Buick for sure, don't know what it is. Man, look at this Willys. That's cool. Let's go this way. How cool would it be to have one of these in your man cave? Something like that. Yeah. Gas pump. Very slick. Welcome to New Mexico, guys. We are on our way to, I forget where, you know? We'll remember in a second, but we got reservations. Santa Ana or some, I don't know. But uh, we're in the middle of a freezing rainstorm, so Quick as the rain is hitting the car, it's freezing through the windshield. No bueno at all. Santa Rosa, uh, New Mexico. Visibility, very low. Speed limit on I-40, uh, Route 66 through here is 75 miles an hour. We're going a solid 40, but that's okay. We can't see, very unsafe. This has been the last three days. Heavy, heavy, heavy wind, heavy front, head on wind. It's just nuts, man. Um, but before the storm hit, it was absolutely beautiful out here. So Route 66, right over the border from Texas into New Mexico, heading westbound towards Santa Rosa, eventually hitting Albuquerque. It's, it is absolutely beautiful. But the weather, absolutely not good. You always got one idiot like this. Yep, heavy wind, freezing rain, just take off. <laughs> Welcome to Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Oh man, long day of driving, beautiful driving. I'll tell you, you know, North Texas, Western Texas, it's weird. It's like flat, nothing. The second you cross into New Mexico, it's like rolling red clay mountains, beautiful rocks. It's just really awesome. So anyway, great drive, banged out about 700 miles, ice storm, heavy winds is a lot. Um, started in Oklahoma and wound up Your from- Your destination is on the right. Oh boy. Okay. Lord have mercy. All right. Waking up in New Mexico. Got some dogs chasing cars through the holes in the fence. They're coming on the left side. Oh, they know what's up. Aww. Take the <laughs> next right onto US Route 66 for Rogers Drive. I mean, listen to that GPS, guys, if you could hear that. So, waking up, Santa Rosa, New Mexico, small, small town. Basically, small town between the border of Texas and Albuquerque. And um, it, it's just such a different, for two miles. such a different visualization. Like somebody up here running radar. Um, obviously, in the east, it's green, it's rolling hills. In the north, north central, northwest, it's you know huge mountains that come out of nowhere, just like big rocks that come up out of the ground. Well, this is New Mexico, guys, and uh, it's it's beautifully dilapidated i don't i don't know how to describe it it's beautiful it's stunning i love everything about this place i love all the old metal buildings that are rusted i know that sounds crazy but i do i love all these old signs the fact that we're driving on historic route 66 this is route 66 guys this is historic route 66 it doesn't get more americana than that and um as you drive around i mean yeah it's dilapidated it's falling apart everything's covered in rust everything is is beaten to death by the wind um, and the sand particles in the air I mean it's, it's it's a lot but it's cool so Santa Rosa we're gonna pull up to a little breakfast spot down here uh, I don't know what the hell it's called like bees breakfast or something but 
it beats the Starbucks, and I don't think there is a Starbucks here, so that's good. But yeah, get out there, man, drive and see. But Santa Rosa, New Mexico, we're gonna get some breakfast. We're gonna be westbound on I-40, Route 66 as well. Hopefully make it deep, deep, deep into Arizona, if not all the way to the California border. And uh, just have a great day driving. Let's get it done. Just some more visualization, man. You've seen a lot of old 66 signs down through here. Phillip 66, Route 66, Gas Station 66, Motel 66. I can only imagine this place in its heyday with a bunch of beautiful Americana cars, man, in the 60s and 70s, probably going back to the 50s, but just old school, beautiful cars in rolling through feet, here. Turn left onto South man, Fourth Street. You, you, you can see how vibrant it used to be. It's not vibrant anymore. It is what it is, but it's still pretty damn cool. Santa Rosa, make it a stop. Come out here, spend some of your money. There's a couple really cool little shops. Looks like a little downtown area to my left. All Take right, the see, second left onto South 4th Street. Then your destination will be on the left. Oh, this is neat. A little Santa Rosa downtown. What are we looking for again? Remember the name of it? Bees. Bees. We're looking for Bees Breakfast. Not D's Breakfast, but Bees Breakfast. I hit him with a D's nuts for a joke. <laughs> Your destination is on the left. Uh, not seeing it. Uh, yeah. Definitely not seeing it. All right, guys, stand by. We got to find this restaurant. We ain't okay. seeing it. Oh, it's All right, guys, one more stop here, man. If this don't say old school Americana downtown shopping, I don't know what does. And if you've never experienced a small town like this in the middle of nowhere, you need to. You got to get your kids out here. You got to show them it's not all about brand new downtown brand new areas like where we're from in northern virginia dc metro area i mean th this is this is real america in the middle of new mexico in the middle of yeah new mexico right but it's really cool man so anyway all right so we found our place found our breakfast shop and um, they don't have the best overhead signage you know what i'm saying they don't basically meaning they have no overhead signage so it was hard to find them but we got it let's go in here and get some breakfast all right, Continue guys, we US are. Route 66 for one mile. I mean, that sounds cool, doesn't it? The fact that we're in New Mexico on Route 66. Anyway, I just want to give you a little more Santa Rosa visual before we get back on Route 40, which does replace Route 66. So you can still go from Chicago, you know, all the way to California on 66, but it's, it's, it's not a straight shot. So there's a lot of jumping on, jumping off, jumping on, jumping off back to Route 40, back to 66, back to Route 40, etc. So, um, recommend it though. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Little update. We are getting into what you would consider to be Western New Mexico, maybe about 150 miles, 100-ish miles to uh, Arizona. One of the most beautiful parts of the country, man. Absolutely stunning. Everywhere you go, it's hard not to get distracted. Look at those beautiful snow-capped mountains out there. Everywhere you look, it's hard not to crash. I don't know how people from here do it. Um, it's just so awesome. It's just so beautiful. Old Route 66 to the right right there. Um, we are taking small portions of Old Route 66, but at the end of the day, we got somewhere to be, and, and it just it, it adds days upon days to your trip. However, whoa, a little gimbal let go there. But however, before I die, uh, one of my missions is to drive the Old Route 66. Um, and just go and just see. I think it'd be super cool. Anyway, next stop, Arizona State Line. And just like that, I-40, old route 66, we are in Arizona. And um, my, 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 what a difference in landscape it is coming out of Oklahoma to Texas, thinking you're in the West, and then you actually get deep into New Mexico and now cross into Arizona, and it is just gorgeous, man. Now, I've been out here before, so is Colette, but... We haven't taken this route. So taking this route, it, it's just, man, it's amazing. So awesome, Arizona, we welcome you. Hopefully you welcome us with some safe travels, good stuff. Next stop, Flagstaff, Arizona. The old little sign right there on the side of the road. Look at that, Arizona. It is beautiful out here, man. Red rocks, snow all over the top of everything. Elk crossings, deer crossings. Man, it's just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. 
right, we are in high country, Arizona, about 125 miles um, east of Flagstaff. Obviously, we're heading west towards Flagstaff, but it is literally nothing. So we just saw a sign, elevation 6,000 feet, so we're obviously a mile above sea level or over a mile above, and there's nothing. It's literally, as far as you can see the horizon, nothing. Uh, it's pretty wild. Considering we just came out of all that red rock and lava flows and all kinds of cool stuff, a bunch of meteor impact areas, like pretty neat. And uh, now in this part of Arizona, it's like perfectly flat to the horizon. It's just wild. Little update, rolling on Route 40, old Route 66 still. And uh, now it's beautiful, man. The, the day's getting a little older, all the rush hour. And when I say that, I say it a little facetiously, but um, traffic has died down. Whew, a little bumpy there. Listen, listen. I've seen podcasts on how bad Route 40 is going cross country on the condition of the roadway. It's true. It's all true. Um, don't drive low pro tires on uh, Interstate Route 40 coast to coast. The odds of you not denting a rim or popping a tire are like zero. So, yeah. Okay, anyway, the point of this little update, all the vibration on this gyro is because of the vibration of the road. But look how pretty this is, man. Like, this is all you see. Um, you don't see a lot, but you see everything. Does that make sense? Not a lot of buildings to see, none of that trash, but it's absolutely stunning, man. Do a little change of view here. Look at that. Look at the mountaintops. We're getting closer. We've already driven through quite a few mountain ranges like this, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's just cool, man. I'm just trying to share the road. So, anyway, we're about 50 miles east of Flagstaff. Flagstaff is the final destination for the day. And yeah, all these bumps and everything, this is the road, man. The road is bad. That's okay. It just makes it more fun. But uh, 50 miles east of Flagstaff, Arizona, that's going to be the landing spot for the night. Wake up tomorrow on Flagstaff, and we got to get to Joshua Tree, California. So that's a, that'll be an easy drive. But, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful drive. Welcome to Flagstaff, Arizona, the stop for the night. It's been a long day. Good driving, uh, beautiful driving day. We didn't make great land speed by any means at all. We stopped quite a bit, but we had some good attractions we stopped at. Picked up some local jewelry, a little bit of local art, kind of cool. And uh, turn off into Flagstaff now, heading to the historic Motor City Lodge. Pretty excited about that, looks pretty cool. Um, obviously, you could have stayed anywhere. There's a ton of other hotels here, much nicer hotels, but this is historic Route 66 Lodge we're going to. I know it sounds silly, but to me, I like it, so it's cool. Look at them beautiful mountains right there, man. It is absolutely gorgeous out here, guys. Every which way you look. Snow's still on the ground, still cold. It's Arizona, sounds crazy, but it's cold in Arizona right now. That is for sure. Anyway, we will check in when we pull up to this historic Route 66 Motor Lodge. Give you a little review on that. Hi, we're at the Motor City Lodge, and this is pretty crazy. Um, beautiful old historic Route 66. Pretty cool. Real cool, actually. Good morning. Thursday morning, we are checking out of the High Country Motor Lodge on Historic Route 66 in Flagstaff, Arizona. Highly recommend to stay. Uh, truly thought it was awesome. And we had a great time. Uh, rooms were nice, really good food. It, it was a unique, historic uh, little hotel to stay in. Take so that's the next pretty cool. left onto Historic Route 66, and, West Route 66. Yes, we're waking up in Flagstaff, Arizona, so you would be incorrect to think we're waking up to heat. It's 28 degrees outside. And cold, 28 degrees and windy. Anyway, onward up where we found a cool little local restaurant to go. Really important, one thing we try to do is start our days off with a good breakfast. I uh, can't stress that enough. Start the day off with a good breakfast. Take your time, get some good coffee. Get on the road, make some miles. So we're looking for this little coffee shop. We should be there momentarily. All right, so breakfast was kind of a fail. We went to a really cool breakfast spot. Honestly, the coffee was great. Um, the food was horrible. It was just basically all breaded. It, it was, we didn't get good food at all. But um, I can turn right right here too. Sorry about that. But uh, anyway, so just a little more uh, downtown tour of Flagstaff as unfortunately we got to make our way and go find a Starbucks and we get something to <laughs> drink on the way because we didn't we really have a good experience right there Street, then turn right onto West DuPont and, Avenue uh, yeah Flagstaff has a lot of lefts and rights so anyway just enjoy a little tour here while we 
you know, park around through Flagstaff, Arizona. It's a beautiful town. And it's kind of cool, you know. The West DuPont Avenue. The wild part about Arizona is that, and I mean, it's kind of the same in New, well, it's absolutely the same in New Mexico, but New Mexico, Arizona, we got a little campus right here. Yeah, it's a college. A little college, that's cool. Is that in New Mexico and Arizona, I mean, most of the United States, but definitely New Mexico and Arizona. In a quarter yeah, mile, pockets turn left on of East people. Torney Avenue, Torney Avenue. I must have been taking a wrong turn. You have to help me in these directions because this has now become like a three mile detour. Um, anyway, back to what I was saying. New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, places like that. You go from pockets of humanity to absolutely nothing. And man, it's awesome. I mean, you really, really go from little town to 50 miles ahead on the highway horizon to horizon lateral limit to lateral limit with it's nothing absolutely desolate so it's northern arizona university northern arizona university well That's we're in northern right. arizona and it's a university so the we're name the does campus. stick so we may be going to the campus starbucks i don't know what the hell's going on but we are on a college campus right now that is for sure and um this is supposed to be like 0.3 miles away we've turn been driving left for like 10 minutes Avenue, Avenue. <laughs> then there's turn one right thing on Osborne Drive. you can assure if i'm driving is that I am probably the most safe, practical, defensive driver on the planet, comma, I suck at following a GPS because I'm always looking around. Come on, come on, oh, you fucking, come, come on! There we go, sorry, but they, I stopped, they stopped, they had to go, silly. Um, but one thing is guaranteed if I'm driving is I'm probably gonna miss some turns, and then a short trip can be detoured quickly. That's because I like to sightsee, I like to take it all in, look around. Turn right onto Osborne Drive. So yeah. Because of that, now on a damn college campus in Northern Arizona, Flagstaff. I'm literally by student housing right now. This is wild. Oh, I'm about to jack that one wheel. I'm not, not literally. I'm not going to literally jack it, but. From 800 feet, to your destination will be on the left. Go Watch his car, please. What is this guy doing? All right, we're going to go ahead and go around. I don't know what this guy's doing. Here, let me pull it up on my phone. That one wheel is making better speed than we are. That's a problem. <laughs> And I guarantee I can ride that one wheel better than that kid can. Maybe not as good, but probably better. Okay, let, it, let me get us to a little bit. Hold on, we're passing the Dell Mathematics. You want the historic Route 66 one? Yeah, historic Route 66 Starbucks. Where are we? We got eight. Your destination is on the left. Damn it. <laughs> all right, we got to go to a different Starbucks. That was like a student in the student learning center Starbucks. I ain't trying to do all that. Um, but I want to give this university a shout out. You probably can't see it. Look over our left here. Just stay focused. This is a beautiful campus. I never even heard of this school. What's it called again? Northern Arizona University. Northern Arizona University. Directly behind that building in front of us is Snow Peaked uh, Mountaintops. You can't see it because we're up close, but I'll, I'll give you a good little tour in a second. So the camera's probably not doing us a lot of justice, but literally all around this campus is Snow Peaked Mountaintops. It is gorgeous. And Flagstaff, Arizona is a cool little town. so. Highly recommend. I don't know what this place costs. I don't know how to get into it. I don't know what they, uh, they're famous. I don't know anything about the school. But I will say, if this school fits your budget, your needs, and your educational goals, aspirations, dreams, pretty cool place to go to school. All right, we are still in Flagstaff. Still hunting for this elusive, uh, elusive destination. Oh, there's a train coming. There's a train is coming. <laughs> Now we're going to be searching for our destination even longer. Because there's a train coming. Wonderful. Couldn't find any more detours this morning. Now we got one more. So, uh, yeah, we're going to wait for this train now. This is awesome. Boom, there it is. There comes the engine. They ain't rocking two engines. I like it. All right, so just above past this train, we're going to get back on historic Route 66 and be good to go. Don't worry, it's just a good morning. We didn't have one train pass, guys. We're waiting on a double train passing. <laughs> Whew. That damn one, two, three, four. Damn. Got four engines on that train. That's no joke. And this has to be the most like Arizona, Colorado thing I ever seen. So she's in traffic, God bless her, but like streamers on the handlebars pink bags bright or i don't know it's just a lot of colors going on early in the morning i don't know how safe that actually is but it's a lot of colors right in traffic with your streamers streamers don't protect you from cars or trains make sure you wear that helmet that's it 
All right, well, that was a misadventure. No coffee at Starbucks. We're refusing to go to Starbucks now. Starbucks has a line of like 30 cars in a full parking lot. Uh, Flagstaff, Arizona gets very busy in the morning. So we are heading to the highway now. We said, screw it. We're heading back to, uh, we're on 66 now, technically. You can see the sign right there in front of us. Um, it says Route 66 right over there. But we're going to head back to uh, I-40, get off of historic Route 66, hit I-40, head towards California. Next stop, Joshua Tree National Park. And yeah, let's roll. High country, Arizona, westbound. Really pretty out here. One of the cool things is it's basically all evergreen, obviously. And snow is on the ground everywhere you look. So everywhere in the medians, everywhere off to the side, everything's covered in snow. And Easter weekend coming up and uh, everything's still covered in snow. So it's pretty cool. But even me, when I think of Arizona, I don't think of this kind of terrain. But at the end of the day, this is Arizona. And it's pretty damn cool when you come through here and drive right through it. But Flagstaff exited westbound and down 370 miles, basically to Joshua Tree, California. And that's cool, man. When we get to Joshua Tree, might do a little excursion down to the Salton Sea, maybe even check out Slab City, which intrigues me in so many ways, but that'll be a whole separate video. So westbound and down. This is an interesting part of I-40 right here, uh, Route 66. So see that sign right there? 6% grade for the next six miles. Man, this is an electric car dream right here. You can literally get back so much energy going down this electric car. But uh, in this case, we're just gonna have the radar cruise control turned on on the Bronco, and we're just gonna fall in behind one of these trucks, and we're just gonna let the car do its thing. Uh, try to get some good views in. The countryside here, it is just stunning. So easy, easy drive to just kick back. Let the radar cruise control kind of limit the speed, keep you under control. Car's not working hard at all. Using a lot of engine braking, physical brakes. Just driving slow and easy. Absolutely stunning area. Quick fuel stop in nowhere, Arizona, somewhere between Flagstaff and California. But uh, look around, guys. So topping off the old Bronco Raptor. Listen, Bronco Raptor is the best vehicle out there. Not really true but it's definitely one of the worst fuel efficient vehicles out there. That's okay, it's not what it's for, but nowhere Arizona gas stop, man. Pretty crazy. All right, deep in the mountains, guys, up and down, up and down. I was gonna get some video a minute ago, it was so much better, but it was like uh, this, this area about mile marker 80-ish in Arizona heading westbound. It's, it's tons of rock out cliffs tons i mean they're like hanging right over the road man absolutely stunning but very very beautiful area lots to see lots to look at speed limit 75 we're just cruising like 68 just going a little bit slower taking everything in looking at all the roads if i find a pull off for an off-road trail we'll be off-road in a heartbeat here but um it's, it's kind of hard to get off the highway right now so anyway onward upward about 250 miles till we hit joshua tree national forest and Western Southern California. We're gonna get it. I don't know what this view is gonna look like around this bend, but I got a strong feeling it's gonna be jaw dropping. So let's just leave the camera on, wait for a little surprise, clear it up here. The valley should be pretty awesome. I don't know our elevation right now, but we've been coming basically down for quite a while. Man, can you imagine going off the road right here straight? Woo, certain death. Wow. Camera's not doing this justice, I can guarantee it. Absolutely guarantee the camera's not doing this justice right now because it is amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Welcome to Kingman, Arizona. Quick little uh, stop. We're gonna get some better food. Blah, blah, blah. Food, fuel, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, my battery detector's going off. Somebody's running us right now. But uh, Kingman, Arizona is uh, pretty cool looking, McDonald actually. Avenue. Nice, little, nice little town, nice little stop, a lot of amenities. You know. And again, this is historic Route 66. So this is true Route 66 right here. Take the next. So these are a bunch of cool little, uh, cool little things, man, on historic Route 66 where you can stop and get food, look at some historic museum stuff, look at some old cars. It's really cool. So this one's actually at a Ramada uh, hotel, but the Ramada hotel also has a 66 museum and food depot. So 
Spend a little money, support it, let's go. Just had a warning for the rough road for the next 15 miles, it said. Uh, again, it said rough road for the next 15 miles. That is one thing you will see about Route 40 uh, going coast to coast. It's a rough damn road, that is for sure. I'm really glad actually with the uh, Bronco Raptor, with the suspension, with the massive tire, with the massive sidewalls. Yeah, it sucks for fuel economy, but it can soak up these bumps like it's nothing. Um, if I'd have brought my Tesla, I would have been so concerned on popping a tire on this thing, it would have been nuts. But old Route 40, it is a tough road, that's a fact. We are passing the mighty Colorado. It's the Colorado River over the right shoulder right there. And the California state line, baby. So Colorado River is what separates a lot of Arizona from California. And right here, boom, welcome to California. Welcome to California. There we go. So last state line for a while. And now we're just going to keep on heading east. Joshua Tree National Forest or Joshua Tree. So I don't even know what it is, but we're going Joshua Tree. So Joshua Tree, here we come. And the real journey begins, guys. We are off Route 40, off old Route 66. We turned off on the Five Mile Road in California. And uh, actually, this is, I think, this may be actually historic Route 66. Man, stop calling me. <laughs> Apologize about that. Rude. Anyway, this will be a fun part of the trip, man. Uh, best we can tell on the map, we're going to be going through the desert here for about 172 miles. <laughs> it is what it is. We're going to be pretty desolate, pretty remote. We'll get some good video though. It's all about the gram. You gotta do it for the gram. So going from Route 40, interstate, still beautiful, still awesome, but interstate. But this is called US 95. So I think it is part of the old Route 66, actually. I might be wrong on that. I'll have to look it up later. But it's definitely US 95. And it goes right through the desert, man. The high country desert, obviously. And this is a cool drive. Not really fun. There's a lot of turns, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. You're constantly bouncing around, left, right, left, right, but you just take it easy. And um, I'm actually gonna let this guy behind me pass. And went in Cali, just real quick, man. We found a little Baja Trail. It looks like it's open to the public. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little drive, just to have a little fun. Test out the old Bronco Raptor, see how it rolls, see how we do. We're in two wheel drive. This ain't nothing hard back in here, but it's still kind of cool though. So we'll go out here for a little bit, just look around, see what's going on. All right, we are in Baja mode. Front camera's turned on. Fresh California sand, let's floor it. Hell yeah, son. Oh, we're cooking. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Cooking, 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 baby. Bronco Raptor's a lot of fun, man. It just, it just really is a lot of fun. And the Baja mode on the Raptor, it just puts it all together brings it all out and makes it all damn worth it love it look at this guys very remote desolate western california pull off single track road heading towards uh joshua national force but look at this man absolutely beautiful every which direction you look it's just mountains on desert and mountains on desert and mountains on desert stunning absolutely stunning Left lateral limit to right lateral limit. We are wide open right now, man. This is one of the awesomest roads. It is Route 62. You gotta take old Route 66 to Route 95 to Route 62. And it's just a two lane road in the middle of the desert with nothing from as far as you can see left to as far as you can see right to as far as you can see in front of you, nothing. It is absolutely spectacular, stunningly beautiful. Just a lot to take in, man, and it is just, those signs all say drifting sand. I'm sure the sand is close across the road. Um, but it is absolutely, I mean, look at that road, guys. You can literally see to the horizon the same road. How cool is that? Just take a look at this, guys. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can really see the scope of, uh, whoa, <laughs> don't look at the camera when you're driving on the gimbal, I almost went off the road. But from the road to the mountains, there's just nothing. No matter which way you look, no matter which way you turn your head, no matter what happens, there's just nothing out here. And that's what makes it so amazing, so glorious, so absolutely beautiful. Absolutely love this, man. You could drive out here all day long. Highly recommend, guys. Again, 
Uh, this is Route 62, also called Rice Road. I do not know what county we're in, but you should be able to figure that out. Do a little front view here on this camera. Do a little more zooming so you can really see. There's just nothing out here, just cars. And uh, man, it's absolutely stunning. Kind of makes you wonder when you hear those things like population control is out of control, too many people. Then you drive across the country and all you see is hours and hours and hours on your drive of absolutely uninhabitable, non-populated areas. You're just like, I don't know about all that stuff. Kind of weird, right? And this is one of those areas. When we pop over this little crest right here. I just got a feeling it's gonna be something to look at because we are surrounded by stunning beauty right now. So let's just get over this little hilltop. I know, bubbles behind me. I know, I gotta go slow. If I go too fast, my camera will shake. You guys will be all right. People drive too fast, man. You're trying to go somewhere a little too much of a hurry. Wow, look at that rim, guys. Look at that. We're just skirting it the whole way now. We're skirting that rim, this cutout, whether it was done by an ice slide or we got to get into all that old school, longer drives. And But I know what shaped this valley. The question is, do you know what shaped this valley? And I highly doubt it. Anyway, look at this. You just, you just, it's too much to take in. It's like every which way you look is just stunning beauty and absolutely desolate at that. Like when I say desolate, I mean nobody here. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. There's nothing to see but nature. Stunning. All right, last little video clip here, but I have a real fascination and appreciation for isolation. Say that five times fast. Fascination and appreciation for isolation. Crazy, but true. So look at this road, man. It, it, it's like a dream. It's like you just look up and it's just nothing but open road all the way to the horizon. And I can guarantee this camera is not doing justice for how awesome this is out here, but it is truly something to see on so many levels. And welcome to Palm Desert, California. Just like that, woke up in Virginia, you know, just drove for a few days, something like that, about four or five. And um, boom, woke up in Palm Desert, man. The uh, absolutely awesome, beautiful, Got to find our resting location. Cool little outdoor mall to the right. That looks pretty cool. Something to come back and see later on. And um, weather's nice for anybody that cares. About 83 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Can't beat that with a bat. And uh, yeah, it's just pretty cool. Palm Desert, Joshua Tree, we have arrived. All right, guys, that wraps up the road trip from Virginia to California. Ending it right here at the... Uh, Beautiful Palm Springs Marriott Resort. And look over my shoulder, man, this is pretty cool. Check this out. So, it's all inside. And um, look at this pair of black swans right here. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So anyway, we're gonna wrap that up, edit these videos, get our road trip travels on there. And um, this is obviously leg one because we have to get back home. But we're gonna take a different route going back home so it'll be all different terrain, different everything.